beginning this June. And over the next several years, the church is entering in to national conferences in some fields as provided in Doctrine and Covenants 164. The questions these conferences will consider have to do with the relationships and possibilities for ordained ministry for our non-heterosexual brothers and sisters in Christ. These questions cannot be avoided. They are being raised with increasing frequency and intensity by church members and leaders in some parts of the world. We are now called to a serious time of discussion and discernment about the fundamental nature of our faith community. Since last World Conference, I have been prayerfully engaged along with many others in discernment about the questions before us. And I would like to share some perspectives gained so far. Informed discussion of these issues including scripture study, will continue to contribute to our understanding and knowledge. However, I'm convinced that the questions before the national conferences ultimately will be resolved only through humble listening to the Holy Spirit's witness today. The basic question is, what is the Spirit saying and doing today? It is interesting to note that the unease being expressed about issues coming before the national conferences is no different in intensity than the concern expressed by early church leaders over the status of Gentiles in the Christian community. An important scripture lesson is in the early church in response to the Holy Spirit, they were willing to struggle with questions about the nature of the church community when some strenuously objective to even raising the topics. However, by paying attention to the questions being raised by the Spirit, the church grew in its understanding of the gospel's power to bring very different groups of people into relationships of oneness in Christ. My sense of the Spirit's guidance for nations preparing for national conferences is that before specific policy questions are decided, we need to give attention to some more fundamental questions. First, no matter what the outcomes of the national conferences may be, some beloved brothers and sisters in Christ will be disappointed, afraid, and angry. Conference recommendations do not instantly change strong views about the nature of God humankind, human sexuality, and human relationships. This prospect weighs heavily on me. No matter what happens, no matter what the outcomes of the conferences may be, the initial response of some will be to want to separate themselves 
from the faith community. So here is a more fundamental question to prayerfully consider. Regardless of the outcomes of the conferences, how will we continue to live as loving communities of oneness in Christ called to focus on the whole mission of Christ while some have such strong differences around certain matters. We all need to feel the weight of those questions now. Second, we do need to give serious attention to a reality in the church today. In some nations, experienced pastors and church leaders are receiving priesthood calls through what, through what, what they testify is the Holy Spirit's witness for people in monogamous, committed, same-sex relationships, whether they are legal marriages, or civil unions, or legal de facto relationships, the same as marriage. The people being brought to the pastor's awareness are people who are known in their congregations. They are trusted, responsible, gifted, and compassionate disciples of Jesus Christ. Their lives evidence the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let me be clear before everyone starts texting. These calls are not now being approved. That's why we're having the conferences. This is in compliance with the 2002 World Church Leadership Council statement that there would be no more exceptions in matters related to such ordinations unless policies are changed through the common consent of the people. So here are some more fundamental questions we need to prayerfully consider. What does it mean? What does it mean that pastors and church leaders in some nations continue to receive what they testify is the Holy Spirit's witness of these calls? Is it conceivable that we may be hindering what the Spirit is trying to do to provide for needed ministry in some congregations? These are very serious questions to consider, to pray about, and discuss. Third, in true community that upholds the worth of all persons, the majority should not decide the status of a minority, our non-heterosexual brothers and sisters, without first fully hearing them. Hearing those in the minority who are feeling what they describe as discrimination in the church. What I'm talking about here is the need for ethical discussion and deliberation that does not further wound or alienate or mute people who are already feeling judged and condemned. Are we willing, as brothers and sisters in Christ, as community of Christ, 
striving for oneness in Christ to, in essence, go to Cornelius' house and talk and listen, even when some of us are very uncomfortable with the topic. Are we truly willing to listen to others, especially those in the minority, before we decide? In this respect, we should hear again the counsel given in Doctrine and Covenants 161, 3b. Do not be fearful of one another. Respect each life journey, even in its brokenness and uncertainty. For each person has walked alone at times. Be ready to listen and slow to criticize, lest judgments be unrighteous and unredemptive. So the most fundamental question for me as we approach these national conferences is, what is the Holy Spirit doing today to continue to shape us as true community in Christ? I am referring to the sacred community in which there is no longer Jew or Greek, there's no longer slave or free, there's no longer male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3, 28. We need to participate in national conferences with an unusual degree of spiritual preparation and sensitivity. Daily spiritual practices that further open us to the Holy Spirit's guidance and God's universal eternal love are vital as we prepare ourselves in the months ahead. It's so easy to confuse our individual feelings and thoughts and egos with genuine guidance from the Holy Spirit. That's why it is essential that we do our spiritual discernment together. Our church's diversity is a gift that helps us better understand God's nature and will, learning to graciously talk together from different perspectives and to listen together to the Spirit are essential skills that are needed for our continued journey as a prophetic people.